What can I make? Crap, too long. Crap, too easy. Crap, I already did it. Crap, what am I gonna make? Before you say anything, I'm you two weeks from now. I built a flux capacitor. Documented it, filmed it, made a video, and brought it back so you'd have something to post. Nice. But if I, you, spend the next two weeks making this, what are you going to make? Crap. Here, I'm you two weeks from now. Nice. But what are you going to post about? Crap. Greetings fellow time travelers, welcome out to Epically Geeky Makers, I'm your host Eugene Stevens. First and foremost, I am so sorry it's taking me so long to get a new episode out. I've been extremely busy, I work for a school district, the end of the year is always crazy. Uh, I'm on summer break, hopefully I'm going to get several episodes of the show in the can as they say, so that we don't run into this problem again. We'll see, fingers crossed. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and start talking about the build. This time we're building a flux capacitor. Now the reason why I did it this size and to these specifications is because this was actually entered in a contest for the school district that I work at. Uh, hopefully we're going to win. We'll see. Uh, but it had to be at least within four inches whenever it builds. Uh, so that's why it's this size and not any larger. For those of you who are like, well, it's not the real size of a flux capacitor. I know, I know, I know. Uh, but I specifically built it for a contest, uh, using 3d printing. My partner came up with the idea and, uh, hopefully we'll win. We'll find out hopefully here pretty quick. With that said, let's go ahead and get into the build. For this build, you're going to need the 3d printed base in either gray or silver the 3D printed top in either gray or silver, the 3D printed injectors in either glow in the dark or clear, the 3D printed hose connectors in red, an ethernet cable, preferably yellow if you've got one, a CR2032 battery, three three volt white LEDs, a pair of scissors or snips, and some super glue. When I designed this, it had to meet certain qualifications to be considered part of the contest. One of those being it had to print in under 4 inches total. But I was able to divide it up into multiple pieces, so I was able to get multiple colors and minimize any overhangs that might be in the print. Start by cutting your ethernet cord into 1.5 inch or 38 millimeter strips. Cut three of those. Depending on the size of your ethernet cord, you may have to remove everything on the inside, so you can just take something like a nail file and push it all out. Once you've done that, cut a couple slits in each end so that it gives you more wiggle room to move it into the pieces. There are two holes on the back for the LED legs to slide through. The longer or positive leg should slide through the longer hole. I believe it's on the left. The shorter leg or negative leg can fold down to make contact with the negative side of the battery once we put it in. Do that for all three LEDs. Once the LEDs are installed, we can install the injectors. Test fit them to make sure that they go onto the knobs. If they do not, you may have to file the inside of the injector a little bit so that it fits on properly. Put a little super glue in the hole, and it should fit snugly over the little knob. This will also keep the LEDs from falling out. Next, we can move on to the hose connectors. I put a little bit of super glue inside the connector, then squeeze the ethernet cable in. Do that for all three. Add a little glue to the hole for the hose connector on the base. I found it's easiest to plug that in first, then bend it over and install the hose connector on the top of the injector. Repeat with all three of them. Now we can install the battery. Simply place it down on top of the shorter negative legs and then fold the positive leg over on top. This should cause the battery to come on and light up the LEDs. Finally we can install the top. If you want it to stay on permanently, just put a couple of small drops of super glue on the four corners and press it down firmly. Reinstall the battery and there you go, a flux capacitor. 
that's it. Um, it is a very simple build. I want to keep the parts list very simple on this because, uh, well, kids hopefully will be maybe making this at a maker station in a school. Uh, so I want to make sure it was very simple. You've got the 3D printed parts, you've got Ethernet cable, which is very easy to come across, uh, some LEDs, and then, of course, the watch battery on the back. Um, I don't know. Maybe eventually I'll go back in there and design it so that you could have an on off switch so that things, you know, it's not just sliding the battery in and out. But like I said, I was trying to keep this very, very simple. Um, I hope you enjoyed the build. Uh, this actually was a lot of fun to design. I actually learned a lot of different things, especially about overhangs and trying to get things to uh, connect. Uh, so for like, you know, the the injectors, trying to make sure the injectors would slide on there correctly and everything else. So, uh, but I did, I learned a lot on this. It was a lot of fun. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll go back and revisit it, like I said, and update it and add add some power switches and stuff to it so one more thing the intros for my videos tend to kind of take a lot of work a lot of planning and filming and editing and stuff um if you enjoy the intros my goofy antics at the beginning of the show uh let me know down in the bottom if not you want me to just go and get into the build and get started i can start doing that as well uh whatever you want to see please leave me information down in the comments it would be really helpful be constructive you know just say hey just skip to the normal part or hey no i really like you seeing you goof off uh you know keep it up whatever it is whatever it might be uh but please if you would let me know down in in the show notes i will have all of the links to the files on thingiverse so you can download this yourself uh i'll have links to uh, any of the parts that you might need on amazon as well just to uh just to help you go find that stuff and make it a little bit easier if you would uh definitely if you haven't already give us a like subscribe to the channel it really helps us out it really validates everything that i'm doing all the work and time that i'm putting into this as well as everyone else on the network because we've got other shows going on we have the epically geeky show we have uh, uh game rambling uh done by cyrus and, and picky old gamer we do the uh weekly or i'm sorry the monthly book club uh we've got we've got tons of stuff on the network we're slowly but surely growing and giving us likes and subscribes definitely helps us out helps us know that hey you know it's worth our time and energy that we're putting into this make sure to like and subscribe we'll see you next time on epically geeky makers